Hi everyone, welcome to a very special edition of Tie Break. We're going to be previewing the Ryder Cup which starts tomorrow. And I'm delighted to say for this special edition I'm joined by my very good friend, the editor of Cricket World, John Pennington. John, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, doing very well, thanks John. Uh, we've got obviously the, the Ryder Cup gets underway tomorrow. Uh, very exciting times. Uh, we've, we've had this theme of comebacks, haven't we John, You know, in, in our last few shows. And, Obviously, the last Ryder Cup, we had one of the greatest comebacks ever seen. Um, well, what were you expecting from it this time around? Well, uh, that was, yeah, possibly what, it was one of the greatest comebacks in sport, wasn't it? You were 10 full down, and then Ian Poulter scored those remarkable five birdies in a row, and then they picked up 10 six on the final day, turned it around to win. A remarkable performance. I don't think that if a team gets 10 four up this time around, they will win. So I think the teams are locked. A lot closer match, and that, that is almost a once in a lifetime comeback in, in a particular sport. There, so uh, I think it'll be another close run, run tournament. But I don't, I don't see one team sort of racing away and then being pegged back. I, I sort of see it being very nip and tuck all the way through, and uh, it, it will be dramatic. It will be entertaining, and, and it will be highly enjoyed and you know worthwhile viewing. Absolutely, JP, and I, I think I think fans around the world, aren't they? It, it really seems to grip people's imagination, doesn't it? A bit like the Davis Cup in tennis we spoke about last week, but there's something about the Ryder Cup that players say, isn't there, that you see them almost in a different light than you do in the majors, isn't it? It's a really special event. It does. It, it takes them out of their normal sort of zone of, of killing almost playing for themselves to playing in a team environment which they're not used to, but he does have that something special. And it all raises players. I mean, I, 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 touched, I talked about Paul today. He's, he's obviously a world-class player, but he, he's never won a major, never really come close to winning a major that I can remember. Yet he's got 80% win rate in the Ryder Cup. You think of players like Colin Montgomery and Lee, Lee Westwood never win majors, but you have them in your Ryder Cup team. Something about the tournament that they just seem to raise their game for, which is, which is remarkable. And the atmosphere is it, it, something else. I was watching some clips uh, earlier, so uh, Ian Poulter and Donald Watson teeing off and normally in golf, absolute silence, yes. much like tennis, of course. And they were teeing off, and they were saying, come on, they were getting the crowd going as they were teeing off. It's remarkable. It really is. It, it's completely different, the Ryder Cup. Brilliant. Uh, and JP, you, you touched on there, uh, obviously, some great team players, people like Montgomery in the past, who have got such good records in, in Ryder Cup. I was going to ask you about that, actually, because if you're looking at the European team, obviously they've got McElroy, who's the number one who's in phenomenal form. They've got Garcia who's number three. How's that European team looking to you overall as, as a squad? Um, I think it's a solid squad. Um, yeah. I think, as they say, I think the introduction of Ian Poulter and Lee West as captain's picks it just gives them that added experience. You've got Anne Gray McDowell, Justin Rose, players who've obviously involved last time out. I mean, it's interesting how the, the three rookies go. We've got Victor Duke, we've got Jamie Donaldson and Stephen Gallagher, but key for me is that those two that's the players I mentioned that they've come into this tournament on the back of really good form and you've got Rory who he knows he's got to lead the team and he's again been in been outside of form this year so no I really like the look of the, the Euro, European team remember Luke Donald wasn't picked and that, that to me just shows what a very strong team they've got no, I, I like the look of that team Sure I mean, and, and of course Justin Rose played a big part didn't he in, in the comeback last time so you've got again guys there that have, have proven it before in, in that team environment yeah, absolutely, and a lot of them will have played alongside each other at uh, Ryder Cups before as well, so I think that's important as well. But I suppose you could, you could very much say the same about, uh, about the Americans, and you've got uh, players like Jim Fierro and Phil Muckers, and they're vastly experienced in terms of Ryder Cups, and uh, I've mentioned sort of Bubba Watts and others. So there's, there's, I, I really do feel that the teams are very, very evenly matched, which is why I think it's going to be quite close. I mean, if you look at the, the USA team and you look at their world ranking, and you you sort of find an average and top them up. I think they're they're better ranked than Europe, but at the same time, as I say, the players like Lee Westley and Potters have you know remarkable Ryder Cup records. And that eighty percent win rate for Impulse is, is the best of anybody. Uh, I don't know, Keaton Bradley's got a seventy five percent winning percentage, but nobody else really comes close. Cedric Garcia, Justin Rose, both in the sixties. Sure. So that. that. That makes it very intriguing, doesn't it, JP, to see how it's going to go? Because obviously, as you say, you've got USA with a slightly higher ranking, but then you look at the sort of experience and things. There's so many intangibles to make it very difficult to, to call, almost, JP, doesn't it? 
it does, and, and often perhaps it'll be who, who gets the best start, who gets on a bit of a roll on the on the first days, and I, I imagine both captains will look to get both all, sorry, all, all of their players involved, so you won't get sort of the, the singles and the players who haven't played yet, so you will work out your combinations and who's playing well with who and who sort of needs to be G'd up, and there's all sorts of fascinating combinations. That's why this year I think. Um, what will give his name some more vice captains than ever before. He needs eyes everywhere to sort of keep an eye on people, how they're not just how they're playing, but how they're feeling to, to really get get to, you know get everything in their favour. What we did, by the way, was a brilliant stat on him. He never lost or been on a losing Riley Cup side, either as a player in 2002, 2004, 2006, or as a vice captain in 2010 and 2012. So he's a but well, if you want to, you know, pick an ideal captain in terms of record, then he's, he's, he's the man. That's an incredible stat, isn't it? In terms of, yeah, consistency. So I'm sure Europe will be hoping that's a, that's a very positive moment for them. Um, J- J- JP as well, uh, we're, we're talking briefly about the USA squad. There's a bit of experience there, but there's also a bit of youth. I mean, Ricky, Ricky Fowler's really been consistent, hasn't he, in the majors this year? And I see he's got his, his hair cut with the, with the USA, so he's clearly trying to, you know, whip the crowd up into a bit of a frenzy. He's, again, that kind of lends itself what we said to to ride a cup in the environment. But how how much of a fan do you think he could be in it over this weekend? So Ricky Fowler? Yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean he's he's if he's record he's yet to win a Ryder Cup game. As you say, he's been in strong form, you know, he's I think he could be yeah, he could be one to look out for, absolutely. I mean the, the other rookies are called no, sorry, there are three rookies in the American team as well, Jimmy Walker, Jordan Speed and Patrick Reed. You never know. I mean, I, I might be wrong in this, but my sort of recollection is generally, you know, more than one or two of the American rookies generally does pretty well. I seem to remember a few other sort of, you know, almost coming from nowhere. So, well, you know, who are these guys? And all of a sudden they're, they're winning games and they're getting the crowd cheered up. So uh, who knows? It's time for, maybe it's time for another American hero. Absolutely. And uh, obviously, we've known for a while now that, um, you know, Tiger Woods, you know, but obviously in America he still gets a lot of attention. and he, w- he withdrew a while back. Um, the right decision for you, JP? Oh, well, the take was withdrew, didn't he? I, I don't think he was anywhere near his, his top form, so I, I don't think he would have merited the place. Obviously, he, he wouldn't have qualified, and I, I don't think he, he would have merited a, a captain's pick either for me. And don't forget that the Americans are also uh, missing Dustin Johnson. He's taking, taking a break, and he's a, he's a fantastic player. So, yeah, they don't... It's strange. Things you always think about saying, but they're not going to miss Tiger in his current form. And he just, I don't think he would, uh, he would be, you know, add an awful lot to the team at this moment. He's just not, not anywhere near his strong form. Why the cup? You've got to bring your best form because you know the Europeans at home with their record are going to be formidable or better opponents. Okay, JP, just before I get a prediction from you, JP, um, we've touched a little bit on what, you know, what an exciting event it is and what we've had in the past. What do you think fans can hope to expect from from the, from the next few days? As far as how the matches are going to play out, what, what, is there any particular matchup you're really looking forward to? Well, it's difficult because we don't, uh, unless I've missed something, we don't sort of know the initial pairing or anything. So you kind of that's always quite exciting actually, just seeing what, because obviously the captain's picked blind, so they don't know who they're going to be paired up against. So you see, you know, they load, you know, whether they load their top players early or late, or put them in the middle, try to try to spread them. That's one that's quite exciting. Um, to be honest. I'm just looking forward to, to, to watching the Ryder Cup because you, you always get such brilliant contests and sometimes it's not always the, the top stars, it's not always the Rory McIlroy, the rookie stars, it might be you know, one of the rookies, your victim do be songs or your, your, your Jordan Stacey produced something out of the ordinary. So I think it's perhaps that unpredictability that, uh, that I'm most looking forward to. Uh, what about you? What, what, what's really sort of catching your eye? I'm pretty much the same as you, JP. I mean, obviously, I love following the majors, but there's something about, as we talked about it earlier, that the, the Ryder Cup, there's something about the atmosphere that it lends itself to. It does seem to kind of inspire people to, to play some of their best golf. I mean, it's very similar in certain ways to, to tennis and the Davis Cup. You get players who are nowhere close to winning a major or winning a Grand Slam, and yet they get some of their best results. You look at Thomas Bellucci of Brazil and how he helped Spain help relegate Spain last week so I'm just looking forward to that seeing the crowd enjoy it and, and, and in some cases I get the impression when I watch the Ryder Cup that there's some fans who watch it live who maybe aren't everyday golf fans but they're Ryder Cup fans you know I think it attracts that's, that's my perception from watching it on the outside it does attract people who wouldn't on, a, on, the, on an everyday basis be a golf fan I think that can only be good not just for golf but for world sport it's good that we can 
encourage more people, you know, to watch games and to, to encourage participation. That's always good to see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. There's a point I was just going to touch on. There are people who, who don't watch golf when the minor cups on. They'll watch it because it's got that sort of team that uh, you know, it's sort of yeah, it, it's got that special quality. They say, well, this is actually riveting viewing. You know, it, it's two teams competing with each other, not just one guy smacking the ball on his own. It doesn't matter. Every, every, it's all about sure every shot matters to the team and not just to the players. So uh, yeah, good point. And JP, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I know we, we stay clear of predictions a little bit this year, but I'm just going to put you a little bit on the spot and try and get your prediction as to who you think is going to come out victorious. Will Europe be able to make it three in a row? <laughs> I, I don't know if it's fair to say that I steer clear of predictions this year, and I'm, I'm not averse to make the prediction of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for yes, they will score a win Europe. I just think at home, with the likes of Lee Westwood, the likes of Ian Poulter, I just think they're going to be just too strong for for this American team but uh, I think it's going to be very very close and who knows it, it may well even go down to well, that's the last three or four singles on Sunday and, and if, if that's the case then we're going to be in for a super tournament Let's hope so JP I, I think I'm, I'm going to go with you as well I'm going to go I just feel it looks very close you say on paper but just the home advantage as you say, the experience that Europe have got, McElroy in, in the form that he's in. I'm just going to give Europe the very slight edge, but let's hope we're in for a real thrilling weekend because it promises It promises that, so a lot to look forward to. Yeah, and let's, let's just hope the weather holds as well because, uh, you know, we've had sort of weather effects into tunnels before, but let's hope for good weather and, as you say, a good, uh, a good tournament. Absolutely. Well, JP, thank you so much for, for your time once again. My pleasure. And uh, we'll, be back in, we'll be back soon, guys. And guys... Hope you enjoyed the show. Keep tweeting us your thoughts on who's gonna who's gonna come out on top or anything golf or, or world sport really on at Tiebreak Sports and we'll see you again soon.